Hi everybody, in this really short video, we're going to take a look at how to move from React's create class syntax to using the class syntax instead to define our components and various other things. Now you might be wondering, why are we doing this? Well, it has to do with a breaking change. Starting with React 16, the create class syntax is no longer supported. If you try to use it, you'll see an error, which we'll take, uh, take a look at in a few moments. So the work really on our end is to find all the create class calls and then convert them to using the class syntax and then make some other changes down level as part of it because the class index has its own very unique way of how things should be defined. So there's a prerequisite, some required reading, if you may. You need to understand how to use classes first because this video isn't gonna go into detail on how exactly the class index works and how various things inside it are defined. So if you've never used a class index before, take a few moments to you know, read up on it, be familiar with it. I wrote an article a while ago called Using Classes in JavaScript. So you can use that if you if you really want uh, another opinion. So with that out of the way, let's see a good example. Here's an example where we have a hello world component and it prints the world words hello world to the screen. Pretty simple. And as examples go, it's not very complex, but it's good enough to give an approximate idea of like what it takes to convert from a create class approach to the class-based approach. So let's get started. So actually, before we go there, let's take a look at what looks in the browser. If I were to preview this app in the browser, notice that you don't really see anything. In fact, you see an error. It says uncaught type error, react.createClass is not a function. That's what I meant when starting with newer versions of React, starting with version 16, the create class function is no longer supported. There are hooks to get that functionality back in, but really though, it's, it's old syntax and classes are so much better anyway. So let's go back to our code. And the way we're going to modify it is by, you can either create an entire copy of where you're trying to modify and go from there, or you can do an in-place edit like I'm going to do. But in this case, I'm just going to do an in-place edit. So first I'm going to replace var with class hello world, and I'm going to replace the equals with the word extends. And then extends, and it's going to extend the React component object. So I'm going to type in extends react.component, and then I'm going to specify, I'm going to delete the, the parentheses here, so let's go and delete both of them and also the semicolon. And so now you can see that we have pretty much the outer container for a class, at least in code, defined. And then with, inside our class, we're gonna have methods. And this method, you know, we have render. And instead of having render be a function defined in the traditional sense, we'll, def we'll delete the keyword function and the colon, and just have render defined, as you see here. Just render, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, and then what you're returning is displayed directly inside of it. So there's a handful of steps. If we were to go back and now let's refresh this example to see how it works, you'll see that hello world gets printed on screen just like we would have expected. Now, that's really all there is to it. There isn't a whole lot that you need to be aware of, but there's some quirks you need to keep in mind though, because a lot of the traditional lifecycle methods we've been using were designed for a world where you had to explicitly define what function would be called when your component was mounted, instantiated, and changed. And with the class syntax, especially the constructor method, you no longer have that. So some of the methods like component did mount, get initial state, get default props, will no longer be defined explicitly. Instead, you will have other ways of defining them primarily in your constructor, and future videos and subsequent examples will go into more detail. And probably the most frustrating thing about the class syntax, overall it's a net benefit and it's pretty awesome, but the only part that is kind of irritating is the value of this needs to be bound. It no longer it assumes to do the right thing and it's no longer bound to the object you're thinking about. So we need to be more careful about defining what that looks like. And so I'm not gonna go into great detail here, but take a look at an example where here I have you know, a more complex example. It's the to-do list you know, tutorial that is on the website right now. And notice how I'm defining the various components inside of it. So we have our class to-do list, extends React components. And inside the constructor, here's how we define the state. So like I mentioned earlier, get initial state will no longer be there. That's because it's replaced in the constructor with just you defining the state object and setting it and instantiating it all in the same place. And now the value of this is something that also doesn't quite work. So here we have some methods, like for example, we have update value, where it says this.setState, text value, target value. This stuff is all pretty straightforward. And the value of this is pretty straightforward as well. But if you didn't do anything, if you just defined your, defined your method, and then you had used this keyword, it wouldn't be bound to the right value. So you have to explicitly bind it to the object you're in. And that requires you to do what I've done here, which is do 
this dot update value equals this dot update value dot bind, and then put this as the as the appropriate thing you're binding the the value to. There are other ways of making this work. You can also use arrow functions, but this adds a little bit of extra complexity, whereas this is pretty clear. So keep that in mind as part of what you're doing. So there you have it, a very quick overview of how you can use the class syntax to make all of your React components come to life, as opposed to the more outdated and now unsupported create class syntax. And so with that, if you have any questions, post in the forums at form.group.com. You can post in the video comments here as well, but the chance of me replying to it promptly is pretty low. And also the formatting options in YouTube make it a, make it a poor choice for being able to dif discuss code related things. If you like this video, tell your friends and enemies, unless you really hate them and you want them to use create class, in which case don't tell them about it. Hit subscribe to be notified of more videos like this in the future. Follow me at Twitter at Krupa, where I'll share more little bit of videos like this over a period of time. And of course there's a book, Learning React. People seem to like it. I think you like it as well. So check it out and buy it if you are so inclined. All right guys, see you next time.